micromanagement is a bust. It's a failed technique. Why? It fails on every axis of comparison. It's not innovative enough. It's not creative enough. It's not liberating enough. It's not confining enough. It's not loose enough. It's not tight enough. It's not colorful enough. It's not bland enough. It's not insightful enough. It's not enjoyable enough. It's just none of the things it needs to be enough of. We're not satisfied being a mega fund anymore. We want to be a peta fund. And to be a peta fund, we need to generate peta returns. We need peta investors. We need peta startups. We are just, we are all in. We are heavy petas. So here I was on a meditative hike, and I realized, boom, I'm eating an apple, I'm drinking water, I have some cheddar cheese, femto management. It was that obvious. Femto management is more than just an opportunity. It's a new way of thinking, a new conceptual framework. This is in some ways like a recovered or lost art. Augustus Caesar was actually a practitioner of femto management. Genghis Khan was an extreme practitioner of femto. Sun Tzu, the current underlying all of his uh, books on whatever he wrote about was Femto. Abraham Lincoln, I mean, a very successful leader, but unfortunately a practitioner of micro. Imagine the amazing things he could have done had he had the benefit of Femto. At the beginning of my company's history, we had a lot of missteps. We fell down, a lot of pitfalls, we fell into them. And I had to go into myself to figure out why. We examined the product, the team, the market. I realized though that what was lacking was my management style. And I tried on all kinds of different techniques. Uh, they all failed for me. So I had to invent my own, I had to innovate. And that's where Femto Management came from. That was the key that unlock the doors in the castle of success. Management is often the last place where innovative people, very innovative people in Silicon Valley, think to innovate. One of the techniques that has been most adopted by Silicon Valley leaders is micromanagement. Every micromanager has a very noble goal. How do I replicate myself and make sure my people are doing exactly what I want them to do without having any source of room to maneuver at all? And then make my organization go high into the right. But you're going down the wrong path. You have no idea how big a mistake you're making. Can I really do a better job at every single person's job at this company? All the people I've hired specifically to do certain jobs, can I do a better job of what they're doing than they can? Of course, of course I can, but that's not the point. That doesn't scale. Today, to build a successful business, you have to think about scale. And you can't scale up an organization if you're empowering all your employees to make decisions for themselves. That just leads to chaos. The cowardly, natural, smart, but mistaken reaction of leaders to micromanagement's failure is they wanna go all anarchy. Everything's flat. Open source, everything, all the keywords, the buzzwords, everything like that. The counterintuitive truth, the thing that you're missing, the brave choice that you're not perceiving is that you simply have not gone deep enough with micromanagement. You have to go many layers deeper to a quadrillionth level. Micro is the Greek prefix for one one millionth. We all know that. Femto is the Greek prefix for one one quadrillionth. So Femto gets you the level of precision at the atomic layer at the atomic level of exactly what you want to manage. One millionth doesn't get you anything. It doesn't buy you a dime of innovation. It doesn't buy you a dime of leadership. One quadrillionth is a gold mine. Femto management is really a science for CEOs. How does a baby oak tree know how to grow up exactly the way mommy oak tree grows up? There's nobody else in the organization who really needs to understand femto management. Does the blind termite know that he's blind? No. Blind termite is just following the scent trails. Can you ever teach the blind how to see? Of course not. It's impossible and insulting.
but you can teach the blind to operate without vision. Silicon Valley has a hallowed technique in engineering. We call it pair programming. That's the idea where two engineers will sit at the same machine and work together to make a more effective and efficient code base. Well, the micromanager comes along and messes it up. Obviously, they mess up everything. They're trying to recreate themselves in the engineer and get the engineer to do exactly what they would do at that time in front of that computer screen. It doesn't work, of course, it's not effective. Femto management and pair programming is the moment when you and your engineer are one. That's the moment when you, through 3,000 hours of close motor coordination, can rehack their fine motor skills so that they know how to intuit, how to intuit what to do exactly at that moment as an engineer, as if you were sitting there right with them. It's liberating. You can't spend 3,000 hours with every engineer. I'm busy, you're busy, we don't have the time, it doesn't scale. So the question is, what technology can you use to replace that 3,000 hours? Well, Musical Mobile Touch is a very powerful glove technology that was created by Georgia Tech researchers to rehabilitate people who'd been injured or otherwise unable to use their gross and fine motor coordination. It records the signals that go through your hands and fingers and then plays them back when someone else wears those gloves so that their fingers move without their even knowing why. You don't have to spend 3,000 hours. You don't have to train any engineers anymore. You don't even have to meet your engineers, which can be a very attractive bonus. One of the questions I get though is, Michael, look, you have this very powerful tool, these gloves, these musical mobile touch gloves. Why don't you just put them on a set of mannequins that can type for you, or the hands of any prehensile mammal for that matter? Well, it would save money, but here's my answer to you if you're asking that question. That is not management. Management is about people. Take the example of sales and how Femto can radically change the success pattern of your sales team. The average Silicon Valley company will train its sales force with six scripts. That's this many. Those scripts allow the salespeople to communicate with the customer or the prospect and then bring them along to a close. Okay, sounds effective, but I'm not looking for effective. I'm looking for hyper-effective. I'm looking for the world's greatest salesperson for my product, which inevitably will be me, or you and your company, unless you hire me to sell the product for your business. So if six is not the right number of scripts, if it just doesn't work, it doesn't make you effective, how many is the right number to make a salesperson as effective as you, to inhabit your mind brain? Stanford research has shown that the correct number is not six, it's 600,000. Wow, that sounds like a lot. Well, that's pre-femto thinking. 600,000, to me, to my post-femto brain, that looks like a SaaS platform. Where does the platform data to replace the 600,000 script problem pre-femto come from? The data come from here. Now you might think I'm pointing to my heart or my clavicle, but the data don't, don't come from my clavicle. They come from the microphone that lives on my lapel. I've had a microphone on my lapel for the last six and a half years, listening to every moment of my life. Public moments, private moments, funny moments, sad moments, marital moments, when I'm talking to the toll booth operator or the server at the restaurant. All of these are critically essential moments if you want to become me and inhabit me. So my sales force wears headphones all the time, and they're listening to my voice integrating the sound, the tone, the substance of what I say in every context of my life. And in two and a half short years, they have learned osmotically enough about how I communicate that they can be on the phone with the customer, a real customer, selling as effectively as I can. Almost as effectively as I can. Femto management is just the beginning of the Femto movement. This is where Silicon Valley is going. I mean, sure. You can nanomanage your way to giga growth, but for peta growth? I've been so amazed and moved by how the disciples around the world have been integrating this new technique of femto into different parts of their lives and worlds. The old venture capital model, it's broken. Moore's law, it's broken. Femto meditation is an answer to our global thirst for spiritual satisfaction and enlightenment. We don't have time in today's hubbly-bubbly world to spend four hours a day meditating, which is what you really need to do. We instead have time and a need for spiritual snacks. If you want to move forward and generate returns today, you need to ramp it up 
with femto management, and that means that the VCs, the directors, we have to practice that too. Femto eating is an extremely powerful tool for the overweight that reduces your consumption by a, a factor of quadrillion. We don't just help with high-level strategic stuff with our companies. We provide femto services. Why should Michael have to peel his own cucumbers or separate his recycling or wait in line at the DMV? I can do those things. So when these pedofunds then set their sights on becoming exafunds, what then? Will they need Zepto management? Zepto? Who's working on Zepto management? In India? <laughs> Where in India? Let's just break it down, right? Zepto is just micro femto. I mean, I'm just thinking through, like, what do we like to work at a Zepto company for a Zepto manager? I mean, is there anything more tear your hands and hair out than that? I mean, OMG, <laughs> that sounds terrible. Exagrowth, that sounds pretty good, though.